everybody and welcome back to another video on the Shadow Zone. Today I decided to build an SLS Block 1B and Simple Rockets and also a Kerbal Space Program. And there is a very specific reason for that where I'm maybe a bit late for it to be honest. The reason is the European Service Module part of the Orion spacecraft has been delivered to NASA and can now be integrated and tested for the upcoming Exploration Mission 1. What is Exploration Mission 1, you may ask, uh, while you see the launch escape system working? Yes, you can build something like that in Simple Rockets too as well. Well, the Exploration Mission 1 is to, designed to launch atop the SLS and take the Orion around the moon and, of course, back to Earth. NASA wants to gather a lot of data uh, from the moon and also from the spacecraft to see whether or not its protection for astronauts will be sufficient when they will be launched on Exploration Mission 2. Okay, and while we see here the map view, I'm trying to circularize this around the planet, which is not called Kerbin and not called Earth, incidentally. Anyhow, the plan is to launch the spacecraft uh, into a retrograde orbit around the moon, deliver some uh, other payloads, and also uh, get into a high orbit around the moon and then back to earth and splash down and here we can see what i did to sort of recreate the european service module in simple rockets 2. a lot of part resizing was necessary especially for the engine and yeah we're already at the moon i spared you the boring journey through space which is, as we all know, not empty, but full of dark matter, apparently. But we haven't really found out what it is yet. Which is one of the biggest mysteries of cosmology at the moment. Okay, once we had our orbit around the moon, I did not really replicate the uh, EM-1 mission uh, specifically. I just wanted to get this to the moon, which I have to say... um was easier than I thought because uh, there are no tools like Kerbal Engineer or anything like that for simple rockets too so I was kind of winging it and I got lucky and the rocket went to the moon right on the first try. Well the sad thing about this is that the European service module as you see here is going to be destroyed upon re-entry. Yep, this is just a one-shot deal. So, um, of course they can build new ones, but, but since we got used to the reusability of the Falcon rockets from SpaceX, all of this, you know, getting rid of the SLS big booster and uh, solid rocket boosters on the side and the ESM, it's sort of a waste, isn't it? And I'm really looking forward to other methods of implementing such kind of things. And while we talk about that, we have now switched to Kerbal Space Program, where we can, of course, do a lot more than in Simple Rockets 2, based on the fact that this game has reached way more maturity and offers way more in terms of gameplay and... Uh, possibly creativity as well still. This here is what I did in KSP to replicate this. <laughs> Again! And yeah, even though KSP is now in version 1.5 something, it still has bugs out the wazoo, uh, as you might say. And yeah, I've built some kind of launch tower contraption, and this is actually all stock, and it can work, as you can see in just a few moments. So first Valentina has to drive the vehicle away because she does not want to be caught in the wake of the engines. And here we go. Our elevator, powered by jet engines by the way, uh, is heading upstairs and delivering our astronauts to the top floor. Smooth. 
Okay, Jebediah, the commander of the mission, of course, is entering the capsule first. The Orion, well, it's not really a replica of the Orion, it just took the regular command the capsule of KSP. Then we take uh, care to get rid of the bridge and launch our SLS replica, which does not really look that well compared to the one created in Super Rockets 2 and also had some problems at the start, so we had to test the launch abort system here as well. Again! Okay, firing once again and we are now flying way more stable than before which was just due to my bad piloting and of course nothing had nothing to do with uh, the rocket itself which has been designed perfectly of course the real sls well it does not exist yet it is basically uh, of course, all the components are there. I mean, they are reusing most of the hardware from the shuttle program, but there has not been a test flight or anything for the SLS, and the first would basically be the Exploration Mission 1, which could get expensive and embarrassing should it turn out that, um, well, it does not work as well while the Orion is on top of it. Hmm... Anyhow, we are now already in the vicinity of the moon, similar to EM2, which will be a flyby of the moon. As you can see in these ambitious plans NASA has for the next few years, these also include the Lunar Orbital Gateway Platform, which would be a space station in a orbit around the moon designed to well, study the moon even further and also as a gateway prepare humanity to go beyond our solar system not not our solar system of course or beyond earth to uh, i almost said duna but in this case mars of course and other planets in our solar system for exploration purposes and as i mentioned before this is also going to be burnt up in the atmosphere. So once again, hmm, reusability should be thought about way more in my opinion. But it of course could be that this is just the first step NASA wants to take to just test with the Orion whether or not they can get humans in deep space again as they did in the 60s. And maybe they have concepts in the pocket that will expand on that. Okay, this is basically my bonus build of the SLS Block 1B because I decided that the one I built earlier was not really to proportions and also the visuals were not really that well. They still aren't compared to Simple Rockets 2 because you can't really paint your rocket in stock KSP compared to SR2. But this is what I came up with. It's a lot taller and a lot heavier and a bit more cumbersome to control, but it works as well. So yeah, that's about it. This thing here should also be a grayish green orange because it was a fairing of the same color, but KSP decided to repaint it <laughs> upon loading it onto the launch pad. I have no idea why. And we end this video traditionally with a compilation of a few failures. Let's just hope the real SLS, should it ever fly, will not have that many problems again. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Also, you can watch one of the two cool videos shown on the right. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.